Hello and welcome to this part one of my new Civilization 5 Let's Play. We'll be using the Fox Populi mods. We'll go through all of this now. This should be a short enough video, I think uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And if you're not that interested in which mods I'm using, which settings I'm using, go ahead and skip to part two where I'll start the gameplay. So there won't be any gameplay in this. We'll see the map at the end. But other than that, um, we'll be keeping it just to the settings and the mods. Okay, so here, are all, all, of, all of these mods, by the way, I will link in the description below. So the mods we're going to be using are the Fox Populi, the main um, set of mods, uh, Community Balance Patch. So that's number one here, number four, three, five, six, and seven. Um, so th that's the main game-changing mod. If you're not familiar with these, it, ch it changes Civilization V massively. Makes it more difficult, makes it more in-depth, makes it, in my opinion, much more interesting. So we're also going to be using Info Addict. Uh, we'll see that in the game as we play, but it, it just uh, it helps you see a lot of information that's happening in the game. It does help you cheat a little. Well, actually, maybe not. Maybe that's a bit harsh. It, it lets you visualize a lot easier how other civs are doing, how far ahead or behind you are in different uh, aspects of the game. So it it's very useful in that case. Um, Wonder Race. Now, this one, this is definitely a cheat. I can't argue any other way about that. What this will do is it will tell you if you're winning or losing a race for wonders. It will tell you when other civilizations start to build wonders. I'm actually I guess I haven't used this uh, in the current patch, so it might have broken. So maybe we won't be using this at all. Um, other than that, well, that's pretty much it. Let's. Uh, oh, I guess I should mention these promotion icons. Um, this has been. With the new community patch, this has been updated to add these in. These used to be a separate um, uh, modification. I didn't have either of these in my last video, but I have added in promotion icons in a few games I've played. And I could never get promotion tree working, so I'm excited to actually use that in a game. Um, what else? Let's see. I have... I've already... Um, Decided who I'm playing Harold Bluetooth here, so I have the save file for the start uh, The start of the map, but I'll go through the setup and show you exactly what I'm uh, Picking so my last video was a warmonger. So I thought this video maybe I should have had it like a more uh, a More passive empire, but I thought to myself, you know, I really enjoy Playing with warmongers, so I'm gonna stick with it. Also. It is a little easier warmongers so for that reason, I am going to up the le difficulty level to the highest, to Deity, and we'll see if we can manage it with this. Um, what else to say? So I'll talk a bit about um, Harold Bluetooth here, the Denmark um, Civ. I think this was an expansion pack as well, so it wasn't with the standard game either. So I think he has been nerfed a bit in one of the recent updates for Fox Populi. So let's just have a read what he does. Uh, embark units gain plus one movement and pay just one movement to disembark. So embark and disembark is going to be fairly useful for us. Um, it helps us attack um, attacks people people across water much easier than you usually would be able to. Okay, melee land units gain Viking promotion and melee naval units gain longboat promotion. This is the two things I think were nerfed, these promotions. No, actually, I think uh, the runestone over here was nerfed. So these promotions allow units to pillage tiles without any cost, without any movement cost whatsoever. So they're quite useful for that. Uh, they're, they're especially useful when we bring in our runestone, which replaces the lighthouse. Yes. Now this has been nerfed, I think. So every time we pillage a tile, we are going to gain 30 gold and 30 culture in the city. Um, in a city with runestones. So if we have runestones all over, we'll be getting this all over. Now that's... Oh no, the where the unit was created. Uh, I think that might have been another um, nerf as well. I have a feeling you used to get production in every city <laughs> that has a runestone if you pillage the tile. 
but still no big deal we'll build all of our all of our uh, units in the capital and we will make sure to get a runestone in it um i guess i'll make sure to have a runestone before i build the unit because i'm not sure if it retroactively applies uh, this bonus um i guess it would from the phrasing of this but still we're going to get lots of gold and lots of culture by going pillaging the rest of the world doesn't we don't even have to invade uh, a civilization we could just go over and take all their their uh, fishing boats destroy them all and get massive bonuses of culture also uh plus two food and gold for coastal and ocean tiles that's going to be useful and that's it yeah i think that's been nerfed a lot our special unit is a berserker this is fairly standard he's just replaces the swordsman uh, except he has an, an amphibious promotion already so it's going to be quite useful with our with our embark and disembark so we're going to have a big push when we get sword now to make this easier for me i am playing on the hardest level in fairness to me i'm picking archipelago um basically islands <laughs> i'm not sure i'm pronouncing that word correctly so we'll just say islands lots of islands all over the place we'll keep the size the same standard size and the game pace some people asked uh, to, for me to play on standard now i tried a couple of practice games myself and it's definitely harder standard because any if you're fighting war you just have less time to move your troops around other than that i didn't actually find it too much di difference uh, if you're playing a uh, more passive civ i didn't find it that much different but i have to say i just didn't enjoy it i felt too rushed i felt uh, too rushed to make my decisions and that's one reason it's harder if you make a slight mistake in epic on a decision well you change it and you haven't lost too much whereas you make a slight mistake on standard pace you're probably too late to fix it so we'll stick with epic and then in the fan settings i think this resets every time so i'll have to go through this <clears throat> so um nothing's jumping out here oh here's one that i found is allow policy saving and promotion saving i figure there's no harm putting them on but i don't have it on in the save file i've already saved but I don't see, I'm not sure what advantage this would give, but also I certainly see no harm to it. Uh, other than that, uh, keep the start bias, enable event system. I like these being on, but I will admit, when your capital gets hit by a hurricane, and it's just a disaster. Like, So I was playing a game where I basically just had three cities, and sure, and everything was, it was a traditional game. So everything was in my capital, and I got hit by a hurricane, and the game was over. Um, now, I don't necessarily think that'll happen this game, whereas it'll be all in one city. But still, I've left it off. Uh, let's keep the randomness down, I guess. Uh, ancient runes. I've No ancient runes. I think it's, the civs can just get to these things a lot quicker. Now, because it's an archipelago, because it's an island map, I think I could have left this on because I'm going to get all my runes on my island. They're going to get all their runes on their islands. No no difference. It just adds a little randomness, which I sort of enjoy. enjoy. But no, I've left this off. Uh, nothing else jumps out here. Okay, so... Oh, this is actually everything I, the way I've had it before. So no tech brokering and no tech trading. This is an interesting one for me. I think as a human player trying to beat an AI, it is better to have these have these available, have tech trading available and brokering available. The reason I believe this is because we can just tactically do better things than AI. Like for example, you can push out and get one technology that nobody else has, then sell it to everyone else, get all their technologies that you've fallen behind on, get bonuses from trade, get money, get uh, resources, and just stay doing this. Where the AI tends to be a bit stupider. It'll just trade one thing here, another thing there. And uh, so you could get an advantage, I think. But it also adds an extra layer of complex complexity to the game, which I don't want to add in yet. I might add in in future videos, but not for now. Right, quick combat, quick movement, fairly standard. If you're going to be playing an aggressive Civ, which the Vikings are, you want Raging Barbarians, because you're going to be going authoritarian. 
and so more barbarians more more bonuses you get so might as well put it on and transparent diplomacy I think just I'm not I I'm still not sure I think it just gives the numbers of how annoyed they are and not annoyed and it in addition AI AI leaders will never hide negative modifiers when they are friendly so all right that sounds uh, useful I guess um, I think that's it. Let me go back here and load the game I've started. Uh, let you guys see the the starting area I have. I should mention I've had one or two difficulties of crashes since the new update. This update is like three days old or something. Actually, I think there's even been a patch to the update. And it's eight hours old or something when I downloaded it. Although it, this video won't be released for five or six days, I don't think. Um, but I will say things have been loading quicker. See the start screen here? That would have usually taken a lot longer for me to load. Um, but it's been loading quite quickly. All right. Uh, I have had this on already, and I moved this unit down here to see things. Other than that, I saved it. Other than that, I don't know anything that is happening I I do tend to restart a lot at the start to get a nice start <laughs> I tend to restart to get a nice looking map this one I didn't think was perfect it could have been a lot better there's no great tiles for me to start you, you know you want tree food maybe production like these are okay this is okay if we grow into this one it's okay and it has lots of hills which will get us lots of production later on. But nothing special. But, you know, I thought, let's go for it. Let's do it. This is good enough for me. And this is the map we'll be starting on. So, like I said, that's it. we'll leave the video pretty much here. Um, a few more things maybe to talk about. My videos will be updated every day at 2 o'clock uh, Irish time. So, that's uh, Western European time. Um, other than that... I can't think of what else to tell you. I was really happy with my last series. It got really exciting. If this series is even close to that, I'd be delighted. And other than that, at the end of the videos, as it's probably already appeared now, uh, down the bottom left corner, there'll be an icon to subscribe. If you like these videos, please go ahead and subscribe. And the bottom right corner should be a link to this playlist. Actually, I'll also add in a link to the previous playlist as well I played. So there should be two links to playlists. And what will we call this one? I'm not really sure. In the moment, in my head, I'm thinking uh, Bloody Bluetooth. Because uh, the name of the character is Harold Bluetooth. So Bloody Bluetooth seems to roll off my tongue a bit. So until next time, thank you for watching. And I hope you follow the series with me. See you. Bye.